it's time to introduce closed sets. Today we'll go over the two common definitions of a closed set. One is based on open sets and the other is based on limit points. I'll leave links to relevant lessons on those topics in the description. We'll also do some examples and a couple quick proofs. Let's get into it. You might think of the word closed as the opposite of open, which for our purposes today is a decently good way to think about it. We say that a set of real numbers A is closed if the complement of A is open. Again, I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson on open sets. This is the definition of an open set. We say a set of real numbers U is open if every element of U has some delta neighborhood around it entirely contained in the set U. So if the complement of a set A is open, that set A is called closed. Obviously this has the feel of closed being the opposite of open. Also, since the complement of a complement is just the original set, we could also state this definition like this. A set A is closed if there exists some open set B such that B complement equals A. So a closed set is a set who is the complement of some open set. Let's see some examples. And we'll talk about the limit point definition of closed sets right after these examples. First, it shouldn't be a surprise that the closed interval from A to B is a closed set. How do we know? Well, by definition, it must be the complement of some open set. Here's the open set we're looking for. Let's consider everything that's not in the closed interval from A to B. Everything that's not in the closed interval from A to B would be the interval from negative infinity up to A, but not including A, unioned with everything from B, but not including B, up to positive infinity. So this is everything that's not in the closed interval from A to B. Thus, the closed interval from A to B is equal to the complement of this union of open intervals. But we've previously shown, links in the description, that open intervals are open sets and that the union of open sets is an open set. So we have that this closed interval is the complement of some open set. Thus, by definition, it's closed. So again, because this closed interval is the complement of an open set, by definition, the closed interval is a closed set. Next example, the real numbers make up an open set. And why is that? Well, all the real numbers, that's the complement of the empty set. So certainly the real numbers, that's the complement of the empty set. But the empty set is open because for a set to be open, it must be the case that every element of the set has an open interval around it entirely contained in the set. But there are no elements of the empty set to violate that condition. So it's one of those vacuous truths. The empty set is an open set. Thus, since the real numbers are the complement of the empty set, the real numbers must be a closed set. Of course, with this complement definition, open sets and closed sets feel pretty close to opposites, but they're not exactly opposites because, weirdly enough, the empty set, which we just said is open, is also closed. Now, the empty set's closed because the real numbers are open. So the empty set, that's the complement of the real numbers, and the real numbers are an open set. We just said that the real numbers are a closed set, but indeed they're also open because you could pick any real number and certainly there exists some neighborhood around that number that is entirely contained within the reals. So the reals are both closed and open and thus the empty set, which is the complement of the reals, is also closed and open. These closed and open sets are sometimes called clopen. <laughs> kind of a ridiculous and goofy name, but it's serious. They're sometimes called clopen sets. Now let's discuss the definition of closed sets in terms of limit points, which some textbooks will use as the primary definition. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson about limit points, but in short, a limit point of a set may or may not be in the set. 
but it's a point which is arbitrarily approached by numbers in the set. So a limit point of a set, you can get arbitrarily close to it while remaining inside the set. So we would say that a set of real numbers A is closed if and only if it contains all of its limit points. This is equivalent to the previous definition which involved the complement of open sets. And we'll prove that these are equivalent definitions in a later video. Leave a link to that in the description as well. You may be familiar with how we might call a set of numbers closed with respect to some operation, like the rationals are closed with respect to multiplication. If you multiply any two rational numbers, you get another rational number. Similarly, when we talk about closed sets in real analysis, we're saying that the sets are closed with respect to the limiting process. Any limit point of a set, if it's closed, will also be in the set. For example, consider the open interval from 0 to 1. This is an open set. One of the features that this set has is if we consider the sequence 1 over n, this sequence exists entirely in this open set, and this sequence approaches a value of zero. So zero is a limit point of this open set. However, even though numbers that are in this set get arbitrarily close to zero, zero is not in the set. Of course, the same cannot be said for the closed interval from zero to one, which is a closed set. Zero is a limit point of this set, and it is also an element of the set. Here's another very important non-example. Let's let the set A be the set containing the reciprocals of natural numbers. Certainly, this set is not closed because it has a limit point. Again, the limit point is zero, since the reciprocals of natural numbers make up a sequence that approaches zero. So zero is a limit point of this set, but zero does not belong to this set. So since it doesn't contain its limit point, in this case it only has one, since it doesn't contain all of its one limit point, it cannot be a closed set by definition. However, it's also not an open set because we could take any number from this set, say one half, for example, and any neighborhood centered at one half, like one half minus one to one half plus one, for example, this will contain irrational numbers, which are certainly not in this set. So it's neither closed nor open. While closed and open sets are close to opposites, they don't act as a binary where every set must fall into one category or the other or be clopen. There are sets like this which are neither open nor closed. Another simple example of such a set would be the set that contains zero and goes from zero up to one but doesn't contain one. This set can't be open because it has an element zero which does not have a neighborhood around it entirely contained in the interval. Any neighborhood of zero will go outside the interval into the negatives. But it's also not closed because it has a limit point of one, but one is not in the set. Finally, returning to our set A, it's not closed because its one limit point of zero is not in the set. However, we could close it or create what we call a closure of A by including that limit point. We call that A bar. So if we take A and union it with the set containing its limit points, in this case that's just zero, this gives us now a closed set because it contains all the limit points. And this is called the closure of A. In general, given a set of real numbers A, if L is the set of the limit points of A, then the closure of A is denoted a bar, and it's equal to A unioned with all of its limit points. Certainly, this set will contain all of its limit points, and so it's closed. Finally, let's show that the closed interval from A to B is a closed set using the limit point definition. Recall that by definition of this notation, the closed interval from A to B is the set of all real numbers that are between A and B. 
So to prove this is closed, we need to show that any limit point of the set is an element of the set. So if x is a limit point of this set, the closed interval from a to b, then we know there exists a sequence, say xn, entirely contained in the closed interval that converges to that limit point x. Then we simply apply the order limit theorem. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson proving that. It's just about how inequalities work with limits. We know that every term of this sequence, xn, since the sequence is contained in this closed interval, every term xn is greater than or equal to a and less than or equal to b. By the order limit theorem, this means that the limit of xn, which is x, must also be between a and b, and thus by definition of the closed interval from a to b, this limit point x is an element of the closed interval. Thus we've shown that it contains all of its limit points, and so indeed it is closed. All right, so that's closed sets, a couple of examples and non-examples, and a couple of equivalent definitions. We say that a set is closed if it's the complement of some open set, or equivalently, a set is closed if it contains all of its limit points. Again, I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson where where we prove these definitions are equivalent. The definition that your textbook starts with may vary. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions, and thanks for watching.